Now in a recent project, I built this 12 volt battery. I wanted to test its capacity, so I used this DC watt hour meter and I was able to measure how many watt hours of energy I pulled out of the battery. Now I had to hook it up with an inverter as a load and then this shunt to measure the amps and it was a whole big thing to hook this up. Now I have to do this every single time that I hook up a battery and I test a lot of batteries. So I have decided to build a meter inside a box with the wires so that I don't have to spend the time with this kind of spaghetti mess of wires anymore. Hello everybody, I'm David and welcome to my channel where I like to DIY projects that are renewable energy and energy efficiency. In this video, we're gonna build a meter housing with a shunt so that when I go to test my batteries, it's a very clean install of that meter and I don't have to mess around with it. It'll be a lot quicker. Here's the new meter that I ordered from Amazon. Uh, there will be a link in the description, some instructions on how to use it and the new meter shunt and wires. So this is designed to panel mount, so it has these little clips on the side. It's a fairly simple, cheap device. They're not super accurate, but they're close enough for my purposes when I'm testing my batteries. Here's the shunt. Now these things have a little notch taken out of them, and I can only assume that notch is their calibration process. 100 amps and 75 millivolts. This particular one even comes with a couple of small wires. I went to my local hardware store and I picked up this box, six inch square and four inches tall. I went to my parts bin and I pulled out this orange wire. Now this was out of a Chevy Volt, one of the first EV batteries that I took apart and disassembled. Now I use this on a build where I tried to make a spot welder. It did not work. I wound up purchasing a spot welder. So we have our wire all clean. Now let's uh, get these ends taken apart. So that's the original Chevy end. Oh wow. Okay, so they actually welded it on. Look at that. So that's how Chevy attaches those. That's cool. This end is one that I did. A Chevy end versus mine. I mean, I just crimp it on. I'm just gonna find the middle and mark the middle on both. For this one with the two ends on it, I'm gonna use this on the negative side. It goes to the shunt inside the box. So we'll cut it right here in the middle. And now these two ends will wind up going to the shunt. There we go. They're not perfectly straight, but they'll do their job. Phillips head screws, and this is where the voltage sense wires are gonna go came two of these wires that have a little end crimped on them, forked spade. So let me just give it a tug, make sure it's actually on there. On the back of the meter is a diagram and it shows that you need a negative wire coming off the battery and a positive wire coming off the battery going to these bottom two terminals on the meter. So it's gonna read the voltage through that. Now I'm not gonna run these wires from the meter to the battery. I wanna do everything self-contained inside the box. So instead, what I'll do, uh, this is the wire that I'm gonna use for my positive. I'm gonna cut a little bit of this insulation off and we'll solder on a wire to that. So right there, I just exposed a little bit of that wire. Inside the kit of the shunt, it comes with a, a red wire and I'm gonna solder this on here. I'm trying out two new products today, a rosin flux pen and some different solder. And these were both uh, viewer suggestions from one of my past videos. So let's try them out. Looking at the diagram in the back, it looks like this end of the shunt needs the negative of the battery, the negative for the voltage sense, and the negative over here to power the unit. 
So I've already attached these two wires to the back of the shunt. So to match it up, over here is gonna be the battery side. So that's gonna be this wire, and I soldered on a negative wire that will go to the shunt. For this positive wire where we have that coming off, I'm going to wrap a little bit of electrical tape around that. Now I'm not sure how much it matters, but I'm going to twist these two voltage sense wires together. I think that's a good thing. And I'll slip a piece of heat shrink tubing over them. Next, I'm just putting a little bit of black and red tape on the wires so that when they come out of the case, I'll know which ones are which. So if you're gonna do this, or if I do this again, I'm gonna move these holes over to the side and that'll just make it a little bit easier for the radius. Okay, good. This is the side that needs to go to the battery. Inside the kit are two more red and black wires. Those two extra wires are if you have less than eight volts. So if that's the case, I could hook this up to like a nine volt battery, uh, but in the meantime, I'm not going to need that. So I'm just gonna tape them inside the box. That way they're out of the way, but I have them in case I decide to test a battery less than. Next up, I wanna add this meter to the lid. So that looks about right. Now we can attach our wires back here. Okay, so it looks like red is the bottom most, and these you just push down. Okay. And we have our blue and yellow. Good. Okay, so they're attached. So the box looks good, but we still need to attach some ring terminals to these ends. It fits in that one too. Oh, but a couple of wires got pushed down. And that's a 5.95 millimeter. Okay, safety goggles when using hydraulics. So right now this die it right now this die says 25 on it. I don't know if that's gonna be the right size or not, but we'll try it. Kind of see when I put these two together that there's a gap, but I don't know if that's gonna close it up enough, but we'll give it a shot. And we close it up. See, it's completely closed right now. There's no gap between the two dies. And if we pull on this, oh, see the, the wire wants to come out. So that's not gonna close it up enough. So we'll loosen this and we'll move to a, another die that is smaller instead of the 25s. So it looks like the next smaller size is a 16. We can also, what I do is I put a screwdriver through this and that way I can really get a good grip on it and I also give it a good pull and nothing.
It's time to test the new meter. I've got it hooked up to my 12 volt battery. Now I've built this battery in a previous video and if you'd like to see more about how I built it, I'll leave a link to that build video in the description below. But the wires run through the meter and then to this inverter. This is just a cheap inverter that I picked up because it had the capacity, but I'll do a full review on this inverter in a future video. It was really easy because I just had the positive and negative of the battery and the positive and negative of the inverter. I did not have to mess with any of the wires associated with the little meter. So that part was really great. Something I did notice though is that the wires leading to the battery are probably a little bit shorter and the wires leading to the inverter are probably a little bit longer than I need to. I put it right in the middle. If I was to build this again, I'd probably move it maybe like a two-third, one-third of the length of the wires. First thing to do is turn on the circuit breaker of the battery and that's a good note is that I installed a circuit breaker here so that I could do all my wiring with no live voltage. <laughs> So you turn that on and immediately the meter lit up and over here the capacitors are probably charged now. I didn't have to deal with any sparks. So we can turn that on on the little rocker switch on the front. And now the meter is showing that we have 13.3 volts on the battery. And right now in idle mode it looks like we're drawing uh, 8.76 watts to power up the inverter. Next, I have two space heaters down on the floor. I'll turn them on. We can see this shoot up. And we just passed 50 amps, which is how big my circuit breaker is. But these circuit breakers allow for that short duration of surge to pass it. And now this is coming back down. I want to see how accurate this is. Now this particular multimeter I purchased specifically because it had a very accurate uh, voltmeter on it. So let's go ahead and compare the voltmeter. The watt meter is very accurate for its voltage reading. Now that's half the puzzle. The other half is the amps. I have a few of these meters and typically I tend to see that the amp reading is a little bit low on the meter compared to my clamp on meter. It's on DC and zero it out. And now we'll clamp this right over here, right before the meter, that way we can see it. And it looks like they're pretty close. This is maybe one or two tenths lower than this reading. Next, I uh, borrowed my wife's cell phone again because it's an Apple and it has the app that can communicate with the BMS. So let's go ahead and see what the BMS says. Amp meter is even slightly higher than the other two. And our watts here are reading a little bit higher than our watts on our watt meter. The BMS is reading a little bit high, 12.88 volts and down here 12.6. And we've already checked and confirmed that the volts are very accurate on this meter. And then amps, it says 45 and we have 43, 43, 45 and 43 and a half and 43 and a half. So the BMS is reading a little bit high in both categories compared to this. Uh, but it's possible that this meter is reading a little bit low. Uh, now I think it's probably pretty close, but if it's a reading a little bit low, at least I'm not overestimating the capacity of a certain battery. I enjoyed building this meter. Now if I build another one in the future, a couple of little changes I would make, offset the holes in the box to allow for that shunt to be offset. I would change the wire length so that uh, the overall length probably three feet and I'd offset the box a little bit so it was closer to the inverter side uh, giving me more length on the battery side. You'll probably see me use this meter in some upcoming videos and now you'll know what's inside the box. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video please like, subscribe, comment, share. You can hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. Thank you everybody for watching.